Hey there, I'm Alex from the Angular team, and what a great time to be a part of the Angular developer community. In order for you to create apps that your users will love, you have to have a developer experience that you love. To ensure that happens, we have some great new features in Angular version 20 that we hope will empower you to create wonderful applications for your users. Let's jump in. It's amazing to think that we introduced Signals back in Angular 16. And since then, we've been pushing the boundaries of what's possible with Signals in Angular. Signals are changing the way developers manage state in their components. But we're finding that there are still more frontiers to explore with Signals. Signals are reactive and can be used for synchronous tasks. But what about asynchronous tasks? You know, tasks where the completion time is unpredictable. That led us to the new Resource API, a new primitive for declaring asynchronous dependencies as a part of the signal graph. Using Resource, you can access the status, values, and other properties as signals, seamlessly integrating them into your other signal-based logic and templating. But you know us. We knew we could go further. So we also built the new experimental HTTP resource that enables you to reactively make HTTP requests for fetching data. It's built on top of HTTP client, so it supports all of the features you know and love, like interceptors or mocking and tests. Plus, it has the power of signal reactivity. Angular developers everywhere tell us how much they love the new resource primitive. We thought it would be great to make it even better. Now you can stream values from a resource, which is useful when you must stream a response back to the client. As for the rest of the Signal API family, we're happy to announce that link signal, effect, after next render, after render effect, and more have been promoted to stable and are ready to be used in production. With these new APIs and stabilizations in version 20, you might ask us, what's coming next? We're continuing to expand support for signals inside of Angular, and I'm happy to share that we're working on a new signal-based evolution of our form system. We're leveraging signal-based reactivity and other modern Angular features to make building forms easier than ever before. Our goal is to combine the best parts of our venerable template and reactive form styles into one unified form system that scales with an excellent developer experience from the simplest login page to the most complex data tables. And as always, backwards compatibility and interoperability are front and center. We're still working on this project so be sure to stay connected with us online at angular.dev and on the Angular YouTube channel to get the latest information when updates are available. And we're looking forward to hearing your feedback in an RFC later this year. We have some more quality of life features that we're sure you'll enjoy. Host bindings allow you to bind dynamic values to your host element in components and directives. And we know that Angular developers not only love this feature, but do things like create dynamic expressions for the properties they bind to. There's just one problem, though. Those expressions aren't type-checked, and that can lead to runtime errors. That is, until now. In Angular version 20, we're adding type-checking support for both the host property and for the host binding and host listener decorators. Now you can find out if your expressions contain errors during development. But that's not all. We're also updating the Angular language service to support features like syntax highlighting, go to definition, and automated renaming inside of host bindings. If you want to try out this great new feature, enable type check host bindings in your project settings to get started. The dynamic component creation APIs provide a powerful way to programmatically create components in Angular applications. While it has been possible to do things like bind values to inputs, there were still opportunities to improve the developer experience with these APIs. So we did. We've expanded Angular's dynamic component creation in a few meaningful ways. First, binding values to inputs is much simpler. Before this update, you'd have to imperatively apply input changes manually, which has been less than ideal. Now, with the latest version of Angular, you can use our new well-defined API to declare input and output bindings at creation and let the framework handle the rest. The new APIs put inputs and outputs through the same mechanism we use when you bind them in templates. Even better, the new API allows directives to be applied to a dynamically created component. For example, here we're able to apply the active user directive to the user info component. 
And if you need to bind to the directive's inputs and outputs, that's no problem. You can add bindings when you apply the directive using the same declarative API as with components. In the updated code, we can add the hasColor directive with an input binding. An additional benefit of these APIs is that they're tree shakeable. If you don't use this functionality, it doesn't take up any space in your bundle. These new APIs provide us with a unified way of defining bindings in TypeScript. And we think we can leverage the same approach in the future for other APIs like testbed and host directives. You know, you Angular developers are pretty cool. Maybe we can throw in a few more features for you to check out. In this release, we've also added support for TypeScript 5.8 support for untagged template literal expressions in templates, template HMR is enabled by default, and there's a new schematic to clean up unused imports in your apps. Even with everything I just shared, there's even more available in Angular v20, empowering you to create apps your users will really love. We can't wait to see what you'll build next.